Welcome to worship at Grace Lutheran Church of Laverne, Minnesota. This is the service for Sunday, January 31st, 2021, the fourth Sunday after Epiphany. I am Pastor Ann Zastro, and we're delighted that you have chosen to join us, whether by KQAD radio at 800 AM, Laverne Cable Television on Vast Channel 3 or through the city website, Facebook, Grace's website, gracelaverne.org, or YouTube. However you found us, we are glad that you are here. Our organist for this service is Burl Haugen, and the reader is Greg Spath. Special music for today is Be Thou My Vision, sung by Angela Nelson, who is the daughter of Lyle and Gloria Nelson. We are grateful for the gifts and talents of Kim Schmidt and Matt Wagner, who coordinate the tech aspects of the service. Thanks to all of you. This week's radio broadcast is in loving memory of Jean Bendix from Arlene. If you would like to sponsor the radio broadcast in memory or honor of someone, there are still weeks available. The cost is $90. You may contact the church office for more information. The service airs on KQAD AM 800 at 8.15 on Sunday mornings. At this point, March is very much open. Our prayer list this week includes Ken Bowen, Richard Peterson, Jim Harner, Ken Hoime, Gladys Siebenaller, Isabel Hahnerman, Nora Matisson, and Becky Haldausterheide. If you are interested in sharing your gifts and talents with through special music during worship, please contact Sandy Klosterberg. Adult Ed continues on Zoom at 10.30 on Sunday mornings. Please contact the office or me if you would like to join so we can get you the Zoom information. Mission in Action Quilters will resume meeting on Thursday mornings in February. The Saturday night service has moved back down to the Fellowship Hall, still at 5.30 Saturday evening. Upcoming milestone celebrations during worship for our children include second graders this Sunday, January 31st, at our in-person service. Sunshine gift cards are available in the church office, and they come in $25, $50, and $100 denominations. They do not have to be used all at once, and the youth earn 5% of each card sold. Lent is nearly upon us. Ash Wednesday is February 17th. We will have Ash Wednesday services at 5 p.m. and 7 p.m., and we are asking that you pre-register so we don't go over our seating capacity. We will have communion and the opportunity for imposition of ashes. To pre-register, you can call or email the church office or register online through the church website. I will also be offering a drive through opportunity for communion and imposition of ashes on Wednesday, on that Ash Wednesday from 1 till 2 p.m. You do not need to pre-register for this. Regular Lenten Wednesday services will be at 6.45 p.m. beginning February 24th. There will not be a meal beforehand this year, and pre-registration is not necessary for those Wednesday evenings. The Glimpse weekly announcement in the bulletin insert is available on the website, gracelaverne.org, under the Calendar and News tab. It contains announcements and the weekly calendar. Please refer to it for information so that you know what's going on at Grace, as well as to use in your personal prayer time to surround and uplift the people and events listed as we strive to live in Christ and grow in grace. If you're using your phone to look at the website, it works best to use the web version, and you can select that at the bottom of the page. One last announcement, we want your opinion as people who access worship on the radio, television, or computer. We've recently upgraded our video rec recording system at church, and we'd like to hear your opinion on the quality of the service broadcasts in the last couple of months. As we figure out all that this new system is capable of, we will use the input that you give us to help continue to improve the technical broadcast capability of worship, such as the sound quality, video quality, 
audio and visual flow of the service so that it can be the best that it can be. There's a brief survey located on the gracelaverne.org website called Service Survey, Online Service Survey. There are a few questions to answer by clicking on response and space for you to write additional comments as well. It'll be up until the end of January. Even though it's called an online survey, if you listen on the radio, you are also encouraged to participate and just scroll past the video questions. Thank you for your help with this so that we can serve you in the best way that we can. Let us begin our worship this today by the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Our first hymn for today is Rise, Shine, You People. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 
Lord be with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion that all creation will see and know your Son. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Today's reading is part of a longer discourse in Deuteronomy, an updating of the law for the Israelite community as the people wait to enter the promised land. Here Moses assures the people that God will continue to guide them through prophets who will proclaim the divine word. Reading from Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 15 through 20. The Lord your God will raise for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our reading from Psalms 111. Hallelujah! I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are your works, O Lord, pondered by all who delight in them. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and righteousness endures forever. You cause your wonders to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. You have shown your people the power of your works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All of your precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever, because they are done in truth and equity. You send redemption to your people and command your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice this have a good understanding. God's praise endures forever. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 13. Paul is concerned about the way some Corinthian Christians use their freedom in Christ as license to engage in non-Christian behavior that sets a damaging example to other impressionable believers. Christians have a responsibility to each other that their behavior does not cause another to sin. Beginning with verse 1. Now, concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is only one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom 
are all things, and through him we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge, since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel for today comes from Mark, chapter 1. Glory to you, O Lord. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept asking one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I have here a remote control. It's a remote control that works with my TV, so when I use it, I can point it at my TV and push the button, and I can turn it on and off, or I can change the channel or make the volume go higher or lower. But if I want to watch a DVD, this remote won't be, do me any good. It'll turn on the TV, but it won't do anything with the DVD. But I also have this remote, which is a universal remote. It can control my TV and also my DVD player and my VCR. Yes, I still have one of those and it works. When I use the universal remote, I have control over all of my TV and video components. But if I happen to grab the wrong remote, I'll be out of luck and not be able to turn on my video. In our gospel story for today, Jesus has control over all sorts of things. He knows what he's talking about. He heals a man who has an unclean spirit in him. The spirit is controlling the man, but the spirit didn't have total control. Spirits had some control, but not everything. Jesus had total control. It was like the unclean spirit was trying to turn on the DVD player with the TV remote, and Jesus had the universal remote, which overpowered what the unclean spirit was trying to do. Jesus was more powerful, and Jesus still is powerful today, helping us out when we need it, using the universal remote instead of our remotes 
which only work with one thing. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for having the universal remote so that we can do so many things. Help us to trust in you and to ask for help from you to do things that we can't. We thank you for what we can control, and we thank you for being there when we can't. Help us to use what is in control to look after our neighbors, like Jesus looked after the man he healed. In Jesus' name, amen. We are at the fourth Sunday after Epiphany. If you remember, Epiphany means revelation or an aha moment, a realization, in this case, of God's revelation of being on the earth as a human being called Jesus and Jesus' identity of God being revealed. The first who saw Jesus were the shepherds who found the new family as they followed the angel's directions to find the newborn Savior, born in Bethlehem. Next came the Magi, when they worshipped Jesus and presented their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We listened in as Jesus' identity was announced at his baptism and as the Spirit descended on him in the form of a dove. We heard Jesus call his first disciples, Andrew, Peter, James, and John, and Jesus' audacious invitation to them to fish for people instead of dinner. And today we get a glimpse into who Jesus is as a preacher, teacher, and healer. The Gospel of Mark doesn't give us any information on what exactly Jesus reads or teaches on, just that he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath as usual, and he, as the visiting rabbi, was invited to teach. We know that people were impressed with what he said, which they thought was much superior to the normal teaching from their usual scribes. One of the people in the congregation that day was a man with an unclean spirit. The man and the spirit heard what Jesus taught, and the spirit spoke up. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus' identity was revealed by the Spirit to those in the synagogue through challenging him and his authority. Jesus responded by telling the Spirit to be quiet and come out of the man. The Spirit did, and all were even more amazed at Jesus' authority. It sounds amazing when we read it that way, but a, a closer reading of what Mark says gives us an even deeper understanding of what actually happened on that day. The word that Mark uses for authority is the Greek word exousia, which is the same root word as exorcism. That gives up an insight into the deeper level of awe and probably fear that the people experienced in the synagogue that day, both at Jesus' preaching and at the Spirit being ordered out. The words that Jesus spoke in both cases were powerful, evoking awe, wonder, and fear. Also, in those days, more than today, if someone knew your name, they had power over you. So the Spirit saying to Jesus, I know who you are, the Holy One of God, was a direct challenge to Jesus' identity as God. But Jesus would have none of that. He rebuked the Spirit, ordering him to be silent and come out of the man. As I talked about last week, words matter. The word that Jesus used to silence the spirit was the same word that Jesus would use later when he calmed the storm in Mark 4. It's a strong, active word, not one like hush, but it's active, like physically putting a muzzle on the spirit. 
and later on, doing the same to the wind and the waves of the storm. Jesus has authority not only over the unclean spirits, but also over the natural world. Jesus' authority was stronger than the Spirit's authority. So the Spirit had to obey Jesus' order to leave the man. But the man convulsed as the Spirit left and cried out loudly as it did so, sort of throwing a tantrum as it exited. The people in the synagogue witnessing this were amazed, and they probably were a bit scared seeing all of this happen. Jesus' authority was again recognized, this time connected with healing, and the people were filled with awe. This was nothing like they'd ever seen before. Jesus was introducing himself to the world as he started his public ministry. He has authority that does not come from people, but from God. And it shines through his teaching, preaching, and healing. Jesus is not doing these things to put on a show, but to demonstrate through words and actions who God is and what God cares about. He preaches an effective sermon and then restores a man to health, a man who is one of God's children who has been invaded by an unclean spirit. Jesus gives him his life back. God's presence and power was manifested, revealed in Jesus 2,000 years ago and still is today. May we keep our eyes open for all of the wonderful things that God continues to do in our world. Amen. Our hymn of the day is Christ, whose almighty word. Christ, whose almighty word, chaos and Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ and made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all those in need. God, there are many things for which we pray, things both large and small. We pray this day for all who share the gospel and proclaim freedom in Christ throughout the world, prophets, teachers, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders, we, for church and all its ministries. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all God's works in creation, plants and animals, water and soil, forests and farms, and for those tasked with protecting our natural resources and all that exists, that they may be good stewards of all that has been given them. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For government leaders, cities and nations, rescue professionals and legal aid attorneys, elected officials and grassroots organizers, for all responsible for the well-being of civil society, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, those who are sick and hospitalized, those living with HIV or AIDS, those struggling with mental illness, those who are dealing with COVID, those who are hungry or homeless, and all in any need. For caregivers, hospice workers, and home health aides. We especially remember today Ken, Richard, Jim, Ken, Gladys, Isabel, Nora, and Becky. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For the concerns of this congregation, those who travel, those absent from worship, those celebrating birthdays or anniversaries, for the people of God in this place and for, for other needs in our community. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the covenant God made with us in the waters of baptism, in thanksgiving for the baptized who have died in the Lord, especially Marlis de Vries, as she is laid to rest this weekend. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. We continue with our musical offering. Let us pray. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, 
like a mother receives her child with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace, amen. Traditionally, grace has had a healing service on the fifth Sunday of the month, which is a time of prayer and an opportunity for people to come forward for individual prayer and anointing. We have not had this healing service since either September or December of 2019 because of how the fifth Sundays have fallen and when, when we have been restricted by COVID. It's been a very long year, a year in which none of us could have anticipated 10 months ago. There's much to be thankful for, but there's also much to grieve. I would like to offer some time and space for you to pray silently. Remember, God hears our prayers, whether they are able to be put into words or not. I will close the time with prayer, and then we will continue on with the rest of our service as usual. Living God, grant comfort in suffering to all who are in need of healing. When they are afraid, give them courage. When afflicted, give them patience. When dejected, give them hope. And when alone, assure them of the support of your holy people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who is a strong tower to all, to whom all things in heaven and on earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your sure defense and help you to know that the name given to us for health and salvation is the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue with the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn for this today is Son of God, Eternal Savior. Thank you. 